The People's Democratic Party, PDP, criticized President Muhammad Buhari and the All Progressive Congress for allegedly shortchanging the future of Nigerian children. The PDP expressed these regrets on Children's Day, saying that the last six years have been a reminder of the harsh conditions the Buhari regime has submitted to children to. He added that the Buhari-led APC administration has continued to mortgage the future of Nigerian children with corruption and reckless foreign borrowings, which is putting a huge yoke on the feeble shoulders of Nigerian children. Well, joining me to discuss this is Gospel Obele. He's an economist. And Agu Kingsley, he is a programs associate of Connected Development. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for Thank having me. Thank you very me. much. Great. Thank you for having me. All right. I'm going to start with you, um, Gospel. Under the Buhari administration, the PDP is saying that government has mortgaged the future of children. Um, and uh, this is because of the humongous debts uh, and borrowings that have been taking place. Um, he even made re reference to, um, you know, corruption, reckless foreign borrowing, um, which I said at the beginning puts a serious yoke on the children. But borrowing is nothing new. Between you and I, across the world, countries keep borrowing, um, you know, every now and again. But why is the borrowing under this government, especially under the Buhari administration, such a problem? You need to unmute yourself, please. Okay. Good, good. Go ahead. Interestingly, it's important to note that it's a political economy issue, not just a core administration issue. In as much as, yes, uh, there is some truth in that, in the fact that the Buhari administration has uh, largely mismanaged the economy in the sense, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a standalone act of that ad administration. You know, it's, it's a conversation that speaks loudly to the nature of the political economy we have right now. And, and also to state that the idea of deficit financing is a, a normal idea in the world of development economics. So it means nations will need to source for more funding to meet their budget, their capital expenditure, and the developmental expenditure. But the reason why it's a source of concern for the Nigerian economy is that, first of all, you have issues around government waste. Secondly, you have the issues around um, structure and how, the, how uh, development financing is being deployed. All right? Uh, we, our policies, our programs, and all of those things are not strategically designed, all right, to enable or to empower the average Nigerian move into shared prosperity, all right? So you don't have that, and yet you are trying to fund, all right? It's like trying to fetch it out with a basket, all right? How do you fund something you don't understand or something that's largely misaligned? So there's the funding issue. There's also a policy, all right, issue. There's also the idea around um, how productive enough is the economy to be able to pay back its debt, all right, in the subsequent years. We remember that sometime in 2004, Wela led the delegation and we got 60% of our debt cleared up. Now we are back to the point where we are even in a more precarious situation compared to where we were in 2004. All right, so we don't have a productive economy to be able to take care of this debt. Neither are our development financing strategies tailored, all right, to capital expenditure or to the right infrastructural uh, um, framework that would deliver a productive economy, all right, for us to be able to repay this debt. Also to say again that every year, all right, we find a situation where that we are in the, 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 the quota of public expenditure that goes into debt servicing uh, is gradually rising, you know, closely ahead of capital expenditure. That means a critical chunk outside of current expenditure goes into debt servicing. So you have a heavy recurrent expenditure, you have heavy debt servicing and low capital expenditure, which does not even meet, all right, its, its implementation potential on a yearly basis. So it's it's a it's a it's, it seems like an intentional approach, all right, to put that to, to put the Nigerian economy in a cage of severe um, economic and financial crisis in the subsequent years. So it's a very very bad situation that we are in technically. Great. Let me let me go to Kingsley. Um, I, recently, the House of Representatives had enabled um, Mr. President to borrow another 1.5 billion dollars. Uh, um, Mr. President also was able to borrow, I think that's also 995 million pounds. Um, again, um, our debt has risen to 20.8 trillion naira under this president. But uh, for Arrested Development, I know that you work with Follow the Money, and so you trace and track how these monies are being used or if they are being put to use. Um, so far in all your research, um, 
what are the implications of all these borrowings? Are they being used? Are they uh, being used for what they said they want to use them for? And do you see, like, just that, like the economist has said, is it going to be serviceable and payable anytime soon? Okay, uh, thank you very much for having me on this program. So first, let's start by placing the issues side by side. Let's look at some of the projects that have been funded by loan. So let's talk about the Kaduna Abuja Railway, for example. That project was delivered by uh, a financing, uh, being financed using the currently as uh, loans, and then how many years right now that project has been running? And then year in, year out, what you have is that project or that radio station and radio services is being, uh, the, the government is subsidizing the fees in that program. So how then do you want uh, the, the, that loan to be repaid from the train services? So uh, just like uh, you mentioned earlier on, it's very obvious that the ventures, a whole lot of the ventures which these loans are being used for, cannot repay back the loan. So I, I want to give on that instance. We say we collect loans to construct roads, to construct major roads. And the question I ask is, how, do this, how does this translate into uh, repaying back this loan as soon as possible? Yes, I know it's going to improve economic activities around that region and the rest. But then you construct the major road, and then the feed that route, for example, that leads from the farms to the major road are bad. So you still are, you're still left with the same problem of not having these uh, uh, goods that are produced from farm getting across to 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 roads that should get across uh, to, to, to the end users that will pay money for for this produce. So we're still left with the same problems. Do you think that no, these? Do you, do you think that some of these projects that are being funded by the government, and I mean any government, whether it's the Good Luck government or the Buhari administration, do they seem more political to you, just so that they could feel a scorecard of sorts, or are they more people oriented? From from your research. So, uh, so far, from what we've tracked so far, you you would want to always see that on the field, there are you in some instances you have project being completed at, according to specification, and then in some other instances you are having issues of a uh, project not keep starting at a point due uh, due to one paucity of funds and the rest. Uh, and mind you, mind you, if you look at the loans that have been collected over time, uh, they 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 are being used to finance. Most of them are being to finance road construction. Yes, they're being to, cons to finance road, uh, road construction. But then uh, the, the worry for, for me is this. For example, the, the 2021 budget that is running currently have a deficit of over 5 trillion million. And then you haven't the projected revenue for the year projected revenue just a bit above 7 trillion naira. So what it means is that you have to use 5 trillion naira, for example, to service that uh, uh, the debt we have, and then you're left with just 2 trillion naira to be shared across different projects and activities across uh, uh, different places. Now, let me define what uh, the IMF uh, define sustainable debt as. Mm -hmm. According to the IMF, sustainable debt can be defined as an sustainable debt that a country collects and can easily pay back and service without recourse to debt relief or rescheduling while allowing an acceptable level of economic growth. So the question we ask ourselves right now, with the current debt we have, can we sustainably carry out other economic growth while servicing the debt in the country? And the big question is no. Because if you generate 7 trillion naira and you're servicing debt to 5 trillion naira, then what are you left with? Uh -huh. let, me, let, let me bounce back to gospel. 
um, Gospel, the DMO, that's the Debt, Debt Management Office, uh, has said that COVID-19 is one of the reasons for um, excessive borrowing lately under this administration. And experts have also said that um, government needs to be careful in borrowing. In fact, they've literally cautioned against borrowing uh, from the CB and they have termed it as dangerous. Um, explain to the common man what this really means, because if the debt management office is saying that it's COVID-19, that's one of the reasons why the excessive borrowings are going on. What exactly have we done with the money? Now, technically, and to be very, very practical here, all right, we've had a very long journey of fiscal indiscipline. All right. And when we've seen that track record of fiscal indiscipline, you know, it comes to a point where institutional players will begin to reap uh, lies what the fruits of that of all the years of fiscal indiscipline. So what happens especially in clients where we do not engage the rigor of doing things right or at least doing it fairly right. All right. What happens is that people begin to try and sound political correct around situations. Now, COVID-19 only amplified or made clearly to the world and to organizations of excesses that already existed within their systems. All right, so even before COVID-19, we were already in a debt crisis. People need to understand this issue. Even before COVID-19, we were already in an economic crisis. Our economy was literally dragging, you know, from the 2016, 2017 recession. We had not fully recovered. So I'm not surprised that the numbers are further worsened than it was you know, prior to the pandemic. All right, so. That is to put in context that the pandemic is not the major reason why, all right, we are lending some more. The major reason why we are lending some more right now is that the economy by the day is seriously being, um, like the structural uh, aspect of the Nigerian economy is, is tearing apart, all right, and it can no longer hold anything meaningful together. We are seeing inflation rise and all that. And, and also then put in the context, the context uh, that uh, COVID-19 led to the rise of stimulus, all right, and policy support programs globally. And nations like Nigeria, who are the lower rung of the ladder, have benefited largely from that. So if you are to say that COVID-19 is the reason why we are borrowing more, on the other hand, you also, you know, found a lot of stimulus packages rising from the private sector and all that. So it's not enough um, 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 conversation or argument to say. Rather, what I would say is that COVID-19 further amplified or showed to us that the economy was already in a state of uh, 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 destruction, sort of, or se was already self-destructive in its, in its design, per se. All right, so what we're dealing with now are structural issues. And because the government needs to find ways to fund itself out of that econ economic quagmire we find itself, uh, uh, ourselves in, it will resort to other development financing measures. And in this regard, it has chosen the debt uh, um, pathway as the only, only way to go in the, in the sense. So we can't necessarily put that on, on, on COVID-19. I think we should put that more on the tracker of fiscal indiscipline. And we're getting to a point where the economics okay. of the Nigerian economy is proving to be more concept or complex. Reasons why the central bank is, is already trying to, all right, uh, reasons why the central bank had to uh, make the MPC decision around the whole decision, all right, because there are more complexities around the Nigerian economy. And these issues are becoming more structural by the day than policy driven or a one of debt, uh, access to debt financing and all of that. So it, it, it's, it's more severe than we think it's in terms of the economic and financial crisis ahead. It sounds like an insurmountable problem. But finally, on, on, on that note, um, Kingsley, uh, what, where does this leave us and where do we go from here? Because, of course, you are one of the guys who are following the money, literally. Where does this leave us as a country? Because, um, I mean, I was listening to the radio some days ago and the average Nigerian that was calling on the radio was saying, oh, before I could take 10000 to the market to buy this and that, but now it's double the price. And the cost of living is obviously on the rise. And then it's like the inflation rate is also, you know, skyrocketing. What does the average Nigerian do? To stimulate economic activity. We're, we're not borrowing to stimulate industrialization, but that is the only way we can quickly pay back the loans. So what this means is that you, you're borrowing money, injecting money in the system without having uh, uh, an industrial revolution with which that money can be uh, injected into and also generate other aspects like employment uh, and, uh, of course, kudos that is also going to generate foreign exchange at the economy. So, so you're left with so much money in the system and then you're having inflation. 
So what inflation does is that it increases the spending power of income that homes will have ordinarily. So what do you have in turn? So you begin to see people being unable, for example, to take their their children to, to, to assess getting health care because they can't afford it. Children already will have over 10.3 million children out of COVID before COVID. So if you have 10.3 before COVID and now COVID has come, uh, uh, and it's, I'm already wondering what the amount of out of school children is after that, not just because of COVID, we're looking at insecurity right now. So it's, I'm already scared for what the future holds. Uh, for the country, uh, when you want to relook all of it. Now, now, mind you, I'm not saying borrowing is bad. I need to, I need to make that very clear. But what are you borrowing for? If you're not borrowing to stimulate industrial activity that can repay back that loan, okay. it, it, it just, what it does do is mortgaging the future. And, and I can right. tell you, based on statistics, uh, it's even going to get worse, even continue by this thing. Because it oh. is projected that by the year 2025, our external debt will be at 287.69 billion US dollars. Well, that's alarming. But on that note, I want to say thank you to you. Gospel Obele is uh, uh, an economist and Agu Kingsley is of the Arrested Development. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank all you right. for having me. Thank you all for staying with us and being part of the conversation. That's all we have for you tonight on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Have a good evening.